Yay. Okay, so welcome, Philip. Um, what first attracted you to the Les Dominicans? I've always had an immense sympathy for the Dominican way of doing things. And when I learned there was a way I could get even closer to the Dominicans, I started making inquiries and it was then a natural progression. But I would say to some extent, lay Dominicans are born, not made. And mm. as you meet fellow lay Dominicans, all of a sudden you find that you as an individual make more sense to yourself. I mean, oh, if that's, I, that's, for a that's, moment. When that's I was, very interesting. Um, when I represented the British province at European level in Vilnius, what shocked me, but it delightfully, was how consistent we were throughout Europe. It was like being with brothers and sisters. They spoke slightly different languages, very different languages, but they all spoke excellent English. But it was a family event and I felt normal. It was <laughs> wonderful. Next question. So it felt like coming home in a sense. Oh, absolutely. Oh, wonderful, yeah. Yes, I mean, on reflection, that there, there seems to be um, some kind of similarity with, with the lay Dominicans. The, do, you, do you think it's, the, it's because the calling is very similar? You know, like when people want to become Franciscans or this, they all have that same spirit or... or or charism about them, which yes. makes it almost inevitable. Yes, I do. I have a theory that most of us are one thing and nearly another. I was very nearly a Franciscan. I didn't realize it at the time. I was a Dominican before I explored the Franciscan option by accident. And I could have been happy as a Franciscan. And a couple of my lay Dominican friends, uh, who you know, uh, were very nearly Jesuits. Uh, mm -hmm. It's easier to become a lay Dominican than a Jesuit, but I think there is something in us that pulls us to a particular order. And we recognize it in each other. It's not, it does overlap with our political opinions quite often. Our worldview is very similar, but it's more than that. It's something that's intrinsic to you and me that makes us lay Dominicans and therefore friends. Oh, that's lovely, friends. I like that. Okay, so how has being a lay Dominican impacted on your life over the years? Right, it's only been going on for about, well, I can say it's nine years. It was five years ago, a week or so ago before when I took my final profession. So it's been about nine years. Um, it's taken over it. It always was to some extent because I'm a devout Catholic and therefore I spent a lot of time in a Catholic environment. But I like the word ministry. I, I'm a Eucharistic minister and it's got an implication of service. And being a lay Dominican gives me a focus of study. It gives me friends to be with, but it also gives me something to do. I feel I can serve others. Uh, I think as a lay Dominican, you shouldn't be a lay Dominican for yourself. I mean, it's immensely satisfying for yourself. But if you're saying, I want to be a lay Dominican because it will give me a better channel of grace, mm. very much, but no thanks. What yeah. are you going to do about it? Why do you think you're a lay Dominican? And how are you different? And I, everybody I know who's in the lay Dominican, even if they don't realize it in themselves, are doers. We come from Martha's side, not Mary's side of the family. We are the ones who want to just get involved. So yeah. we could be the order of St. Martha, supposed to St. <laughs> Dominic. But Catherine yeah. was a worker, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a beautiful concept, actually. Although we mustn't forget, you know, that part of being a lay Dominican is 
contemplation and for some of us that is through study mm-hmm. um let's your divina maybe you know and um yeah and prayer so yeah. that that's quite another element to our life isn't it oh, yeah. so i i hear you saying philip that um gradually um being a lay dominican is quite a commitment isn't it yes it's not something to consider lightly yes it's right there's two sides to that question i'm tired uh some of the lay dominicans that we both know are young and just starting out without children and healthy partners and then it's a fairly easy load uh we can get involved we can give and it makes a wonderful alternative to a job being a lay dominican but in terms of the contrast while you're lay dominican it's so different from what you do for a living and a change is as good as a rest Mm. if you are in the 35s to 55s when the family is demanding or perhaps even worse when you're my age but you've got an even elder mother father to look after then it's a very hard job to keep both of them going it can mop up a lot of time and commitment but that's when i hope your lay dominican brothers and sisters will be there for you because we are part of a family outside our own family and you'll get you should get a lot of support for it but if you have got major family commitments i am not suggesting that like the sisters and the friars we should take a vow of celibacy i can argue profoundly against that but uh, a friend of ours talks about us as Dominican laity rather than lay Dominican. We are members of the laity. We have got family responsibilities. We've got job responsibilities. And we've got to balance that because it's our prime responsibility with our Dominican one. And that requires thinking through, talking with perhaps more experienced members of the order and looking for support, because there'll be times when it's almost impossible to do everything. And then you do need the support and the prayers of your colleagues. Exactly. Okay, so I think you've already, you have already touched on this, the next question. So it's really about um, ministry or preaching. And what opportunities are there for preaching um, within your daily life? A problem comes when people think preaching is what you do at a lectern. And I'm retired, as I said, but on Wednesdays, I spend my day in the Dominican Friary in Oxford as a volunteer doorman. And I let people in and I talk to them. And I am the face of the Dominican friars that people see first. And I've got to make them welcome, sometimes limit their expectations, but it's service, it's ministry, but I'm doing it. I must be doing it in a Catholic way, but I'm trying to do it in a Dominican way of welcoming people, interpreting the way the friars work. And, well, I've been told I do quite a good job at that. So I'm assuming it's a successful ministry. I was a schoolmaster and I spent a lot of time avoiding the God question because I'm not supposed to preach uh, from the teacher's bench. But I never avoided the fact I was a Christian, I was a Catholic. And the number of parents meetings when usually an Asian family sat down in front of me and said, I believe you're a Catholic, yes. Oh good, I am pleased. I hate the thought of my children being taught by atheists. Mm -hmm. Simply being a ministering Catholic, I think is an endless preaching opportunity. Getting cross about political situations, if it's done with love and charity, 
I think is a ministry opportunity. When I first fell amongst the Dominicans, they were often in trouble for bar uh, setting up protest groups outside the local American air bases and objecting to the fact there were nuclear weapons there. And several of them ended up in court for malicious trespass. So I've never done that quite, but I do think preaching isn't just what you do from the pulpit. And if we are good Catholics, and lay Dominicans are good Catholics, we should live our life as a preaching exercise. Not a labored one, it should come from within. What makes you and I lay Dominicans affects everything we do. And people either look at us and say, I'd like some of that, or they just think weirdo, nice, but weirdo, and let us get on with it. <laughs> okay. Um, right, Philip, which Dominican saint do you have the most devotion to and why? It's got to be Catherine, Catherine of Siena. Uh, mm -hmm. I like to say Thomas Aquinas, uh, but I do feel as a Dominican, we have to avoid the intellectualizing too much. And we need Thomas, but Thomas was an academic. Catherine was literally there where the blood was falling. Catherine simply lived her life. She wasn't afraid of politically contradicting people. She sets a standard for all of us. And when you consider when she lived and that she was a woman, I think she's marvelous. And I think Catherine is a saint for every age. Yes, she fits into her period. But if you, you know, there's no room for women in the Catholic Church. Have you spoke to one of the sisters of St. Catherine? I mean, they, are, they come with elbows. So for me, it's got to be Catherine. And when I read her letters, I feel I'm in the presence of a wonderful sermon. And you could just stand at, well, I was part of a, a Catherine of Siena society. We called ourselves Kate's Mates, because it sounded witty. And uh, one of the things I did a couple of times was just stand up at a pulpit and read a letter. And then afterwards we'd talk about it. What did she mean? And it's what often happens after mass when you talk to the priest about the homily. She really does take all the boxes. So, mm -hmm. Catherine of Siena. Good. Okay. And final question, Philip, you'll be glad to hear, is about books. Do you have a favourite book or a book that you would like to recommend? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> uh, probably... One or other of these, they are. Ah, I don't know. Oh, yes, McCabe. Herbert McCabe's God yeah. Matters and God Still Matters. Herbert was preaching in Oxford when I first fell amongst the Dominicans. And he writes like he preached. He preached like he writes. Uh, and it's very much, what are you going to do about it? Uh, I mean, there's charity there. But it's, he preaches a practical religion. And I think if you read any of Herbert's work, books, but these two in particular, you do get an impression of how to live your life. When I first started at Blackfriars, one of the key themes was the idea, we are the Pilgrim Church. We don't belong here, we're just passing through. But while we're here, let's party because it's God's gift and we should enjoy it. And I think getting the balance right between enjoying this wonderful world and remembering it's only temporary is very important. And Herbert always helps me to do it. 
yeah. Okay, well, that's it, Philip. Thank you very much for My your pleasure. time and your wisdom. Thank you. My pleasure. Bye bye. Bye. Right. I don't know how to. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, recording. How do I, how do I stop it?